Um, so I've been teaching for, for 30 years now. Um, did first 10 years in Leeds area. Uh, then went to Russia for over 10 years, best years of my life. Definitely recommend Moscow. Uh, then I went to Berlin, uh, which I liked, but it was a big cut in pay. So I, it wasn't really viable for me to stay. Uh, and the solution to that was to move to Orelsk. So I spent 15 months in Orelsk. Um, I, I was happy working for the NIS school. Um, Orelsk has a limited amount to offer, certainly living in Astana has a lot more to offer than living in, in Orelsk. Um, there, there were some issues, um, such as regarding the, uh, the medicals, which they haven't told me about in advance, and I objected to a, a couple of uh, intrusive procedures. It just seemed to differ between different NIS schools. They all say you need a medical, but the procedures they require does seem to, to differ. I had a friend in, um, I, well, I've got friends in two other NIS schools or who were in other NIS schools. There seems to be inconsistency just there. So I did object to that. The other thing is I was separated from my family. Um, and I don't know how old your, your son is, but it's difficult if you want your son to be educated in, in English and you're not in uh, Almaty or, or Astana and the Sultan, um, it, it can be difficult to, to have your children educated in, in English. So, so my, my family stayed back in the UK. Um, so, so that was another reason really why, why my stay in uh, Oralsk was so short. I wanted to obviously be reunited in my with my family. And I went to work in Scotland for two and a half years and moved to live in Scotland, which was always my dream. Um, and then it's, it's quite bizarre, really, as to how I came back to, to Kazakhstan. When I left, I never thought I'd ever return, to be honest. Um, and, and I left not feeling in, entirely happy, if I was to be honest. Um, what happened was um, a colleague from Orals asked me to write him a job reference. And I wrote him a job reference. And he, he got the job. But then he was offered promotion in his job in Jeddah, I think he's in Saudi Arabia. So he, he changed his mind, he let the school down. Uh, and he suggested to the school they might contact me. So suddenly, out of the blue, thinking I was going to live out the rest of my career in Scotland, um, I suddenly had these people giving me the, the hard style saying, come to Kazakhstan. Um, and it was a difficult decision because I wasn't looking for work at the time. And I, was, I was fairly settled where I was, but ultimately I decided to, to come to Kazakhstan, and and I'm glad that I did. It's, 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 um, if, if I say things aren't perfect, it's it's not anything to do with Kazakhstan. It's due to due to my personal circumstances. Yes, my my family are back in Scotland, so so we are separated. Um, but putting that aside, uh, I am very very happy here, and certainly very very happy in, and I do prefer to call it Astana. I'm very reluctant to call it Nurse Sultan. Mm. For me, it will always be Astana. The football team is still Astana. Mm. Um, and and I, I say I'm very happy here. I feel the city's got a, an awful lot to, to offer, especially if you like sport. You can go and watch Manchester United lose and things like that. <laughs> I love going to watch the ice hockey. It's, um, it's got cycle lanes. It's relatively easy to get on the bike. Not perfect, but people tend to park on the cycle lanes. Uh, mm -hmm. People just tend to dig up the cycle lanes and they don't fill in the holes afterwards and things like that. Um, but it, it is, it does have a lot more to offer, certainly than my, my experience in, in or else. To put it bluntly, money. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can provide for my family better here than if I'm back in Scotland. So I am paid significantly more here, so it, so it does help. Um, I also, I spent many years as an international teacher, so I like teaching in international schools. I knew Kazakhstan previously anyway, so I knew what I was coming to. Um, I've always felt that I would be fairly comfortable, probably in most of the former Soviet Union, because I spent so many time, so, so, much, so many years in Moscow and being married to a Russian and speaking a little bit of Russian, not much Kazakh, but mm. enough Russian to get by, um, obviously somewhere that, which I personally felt very comfortable coming to. I've always enjoyed working uh, with with the local people. I get on with them very well. Mm -hmm. um, I find them on the whole very, very honest. Um, I, I like their values. They're very family orientated. Uh, I think they're quite hard working. Um, so 
it's, it's always been an absolute pleasure and, and not just working with the Kazakh people, but if you're going to cafes, restaurants, you know, all, all your life outside, I find that the Kazakh people are absolutely wonderful. I've never, never had any experience, any theft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a colleague of mine, I'll tell a little anecdote, a colleague of mine, um, when he went to a local cafe, he would leave his mobile phone on the table while he went to the bathroom and he'd come back and he wouldn't worry about it. He then moves off to Romania and of course within days he's lost his mobile phone. So I think people, we are in a, in a very, very safe society here, you know, compared to most countries in the world. You, you're not going to find many places that feel more safe. And I think most women feel very, very safe here as, as well. I have very little idea of how it's made. I don't really know many uh, Kazakh dishes um, because uh, it's a bit like Russia. A lot of the dishes that you see here, you assume that they are Kazakh, but, but if you know more, you actually know that plof is not Russian, plof is not uh, Kazakh, it's actually Uzbek. Um, so I quite, like, I quite like plof, but as I say, it's not really Kazakh. So what, so what have we got? Manti, I like, but I don't eat it very often, if I have to be honest. I used to like it when I was in Orelsk. And I used to eat it far more often there. Bish uh, Parmak, I have tasted. Um, personally, I have no issues about eating horse meat. Um, I do feel here that the, the balance between meat and green vegetables in particular is not quite how I would like it. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like more greens personally. Um, but, but the Bish Parmak, I was at NIS Urals, pupils preparing it and bringing it into school for whatever national special day it was, um, and, and liking it. I've, I've never had a bad experience of local food. It, it would not, I would not say, you do not come to Kazakhstan for the food. You go to France for the food, you go to Italy for the food, you might go to Mexico for the food. Okay, so everything, everything's, all the food I've ever eaten here has been absolutely fine but I don't think it's a national strength. When I've been out and about, uh, especially when I've traveled to, to less frequented areas, um, that's sort of off the beaten track a little bit, I've always found the locals very, very welcoming. Uh, I've been having a day trip to, uh, I'm trying to remember the name, but it's National Park to the south of Astana. Oh, I have to skip the names, I can't remember it. I just remember it begins with a K. Um, go in there and... Uh, we, they say we came to the cafe, but it was really more like somebody's living room. And uh, they always made such a fuss of us uh, and, um, and made sure that we were, we were well looked after. They, I think they put their guests first before themselves. Okay, I'll cover the negative. For the negative, it depends where you are, obviously, because if you're down in Almaty or Shimkent, you're going to have a very different experience to if you're in Uralsk or, or Astana. And it, and it has to be said with, with Astana, it's the winters. The winters are tough. Mm -hmm. it, it's difficult to keep fit in the winter because uh, unless you're very, very hard, you don't want to go out running or you certainly can't go out cycling in minus 40. So the winters are very, very tough. Mm -hmm. um, everything else, uh, especially for Astana, um, I, I would say are very, very positive. Um, mm -hmm. I don't go out to the theatre much, but there are those opportunities. Uh, sport, um, they've got quite a good team in, in FC Astana. Uh, they win the championship every year these days. <laughs> it's, it's where the money goes, obviously, into that clubs. It's state sponsored. Uh, and the ice hockey to a good standard. So they, they play in the, in the Russian league. They're, they're in the top quartile of the teams that play in the, uh, oh, I said the Russian league, the international um, continent, continental hockey league, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, but most of the teams are Russian, and it is pretty much Russian-led. Um, so I have a good life here. There's, there's plenty of restaurants, plenty of places to go out to. Um, my accommodation here is very, very good. Um, it's, it's, uh, some, I, think, I think people like yourself who aren't in Astana probably see Astana as being expensive, but if mm -hmm. I compare Astana to being back home, mm -hmm. you know, it depends what your benchmark is. Yeah. Uh, it is very cheap here, so I, I can live well. Uh, transport in particular is very, very cheap. Great place for, for traveling from here. I've traveled from Georgia, which I recommend very much. I wouldn't go and work in Georgia because I don't think they'll pay me enough, but to go there for a week is fantastic. Uh, likewise with Uzbekistan, I did a big tour of Uzbekistan. So it, it's a fantastic base 
to explore. If you're a traveler and you like to explore, it's a fantastic place for both exploring Kazakhstan, which is worth doing, um, but also some of the, the other countries of the former Soviet Union. The very first time. Um, arrive here open-minded, be, be prepared for the winters. Um, if you're a teacher, you, you tend to miss the best part of the year because the summer you're out of the country for two months typically. Mm -hmm. So you get that, a bit an imbalanced view about, about the climate here. Um, it is a dry climate on the whole. So yeah, def definitely be ready to, to cope with the climate. Um, my recommendation, and you might disagree with this, is mm -hmm. to perhaps put an emphasis on learning Russian rather than learning Kazakh. Um, I, I obviously have a, in a situation where I knew some Russian anyway because I've lived in Russia for so many years and I'm married to a Russian. Um, but everybody here just about, there might be a few corners of Kazakhstan down south where it's not true, but everybody will speak Russian. Not everybody will, be, will speak Kazakh. So I am, um, or, although it, you made them smile, certainly if you talk to a Kazakh, even if you say Rachmed or something like that, you just say thank you in, in Kazakh. They, they do love that. So you do get a better response, no doubt about it. Um, but practically speaking, uh, I would say certainly try to, to learn some Russian. Um, initially, I would say learn the alphabet. Although that is going to change because they're introducing a Roman alphabet, aren't they, over the next couple of years in Kazakhstan. Um, <laughs> I don't bother. So I know a few, I know Rachmed, I know Bish Parmach, and therefore I know Bish as well, <laughs> because Bish Parmach means five fingers. Um, come here with an open mind, uh, enjoy it, get out as much as you can. Um, if if you come to Aston, there's probably more expat groups uh, where you can make friends. Uh, for example, there's a, there's a monthly pub quiz that we have in Astana. That's a way of, of meeting up with people um, that are expats, but not people that you work with all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's quite nice to see, meet other people other than the people that you actually work with. Um, if, if you come to Astana um, and you're fit enough and active enough, definitely get a bike get out and about, um, enjoy the city. It's, it's got a lovely promenade along the river. Um, there are things that I still have not been to see. So there's a Casa History and Culture Museum I've not visited yet. Um, go, go experience the cultural thing. The music is good. Um, and and just, just enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a good country, you know. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of it. I, I, what I will share with you is when I first looked at Kazakhstan, this was before I went to Urals. So what you do, you do internet search. Mm -hmm. And I did a Google Images search and what I got was a map of Kazakhstan, which, was, which showed where the nuclear waste was stored, where the germ warfare plants were, where all these bad things were. And, and I think there, there are parts of Kazakhstan, especially in the East, that have and suffered um, a big environmental impact from various things, uh, but for most of Kazakhstan, it's wide open step um, and you know, a, a fairly clean, safe environment in, in which to live. Some people complain about pollution in Astana. Uh, it can be high in the winter, um, but on the whole, it, it's also windy. It's a very windy city, so that does help clear away the pollution to, to a certain extent. Um, and also, of course, um, if you, if you go to Almaty, there's opportunities for skiing there. Uh, there's a place to, uh, about three hours, three, four hours, might be further, north of Astana. Uh, it's a single hill, it's a single slope. It's a little bit limited, but you, you can go skiing there. There's cross-country skiing, of course, in the winter. Um, great place to learn how to ice skate, either indoors or outdoors. We've got um, a superb um, a speed skating track in Astana at Alau. Um, and that's a, an excellent place to go to, to learn how to, how to, how to ice skate. I, I think certainly, I think if you go anywhere in the world, you, you can't necessarily take all the things you do in your previous home country and expect to be able to do them in just the same way. You, you've got to look at the new opportunities that are on offer and see it as an opportunity to do something new rather, rather than just transferring your pre-existing life. 